Ah, at last the test server of patch 8.5 is released and I've been waiting all morning in a queue uh, to get into it and it lasts a minute and there are quite a few changes in this patch and uh, right here you can see the change that probably was uh, debated about for hottest on various forums and you know commented below my uh, preview videos the most on um, the Leopard 1 and the new German medium tank line. Now I had very very high set hopes about this tank and the line and I must say I was a bit disappointed. I like this tank, I like it a lot, it's one of my favourite tanks in the game till now but I still thought it would be better, I thought it would be a lot better than it is and um, yeah Let's just have a look at the German tech tree. Germany. Here, so you can see at tier 4, there's a new tank, the VK 2001D, and there's a new tank at tier 7, the Aufklärungspanzer. So now I understand why they uh, put the VK 2801 to tier 6, because they're already planning to link. Uh, this scout line to the Leopard 1 line in patch 8.4. So now we're in patch 8.5 and they've also added the VK 3001D which is more or less just a nerfed VK 3002D. Uh, so yeah, it, it isn't called DB anymore, it's called only VK 3002D. So yeah, and then of course there's the new line of German medium tanks. And we've got the Indian Panzer at tier 8, the Leopard Prototype A at tier 9, and the Leopard 1 at tier 10. So, yeah, I think that's uh, quite a lot of changes, and I always think it's cool if they add new tanks. So, uh, let's have a look at the new German vehicles. First of all, the VK 2001D at tier 4. Uh, when I first saw this tank, the first thing I associated with it was Panzer III. It just looks more or less exactly the same as the Panzer III. It's not quite as fast as the Panzer III, but it's got the same gun, it's got the same kind of turret. It's more or less the same, and the gameplay in it is pretty similar as well. So, then there's the Aufklärungspanzer at tier 7. And this tank is pretty interesting because this kind of looks a lot like a stock panther. It's got the stock panther turret and it's got the panther hole. But I just want to quickly show you something really funny. This is I've got this um, I've got all top modules fitted on this tank. But now just have a look at this tank with a stock turret. Here, that looks so ridiculous. So of course the first thing I did is I mounted the better turret and this tank still isn't a beauty, it won't win some kind of beauty contest or something like that, but it looks okay. And I think this tank's gonna be pretty cool for those of you who like to play scouts. It's gonna be especially good I think against artillery because uh, this tank is pretty heavy, you can see it weighs up to 45 tons although it's a light tank, it's that heavy and that means you'll be able to do really good ramming attacks against artillery and do a whole pile of damage so this tank will be pretty cool especially against artillery but I think the main problem is its size, just look at the side of this tank, it's far too big uh, if you're passing by some other tank in this tank or you're trying to do a carousel maneuver or something like that if he aims up here he's got all the time of the world to shoot this whole huge chassis of your tank so that's going to be a bit dangerous but otherwise I think this tank's going to be uh, quite good fun then the new tier 6 tank that links the Panzer 3 slash 4 to the VK 3002D is the VK 3001D and as I already said this is just more or less a nerved VK 3002D it's 
it's just exactly the same really it's got a the gun isn't quite as good speed is the same traverse speed is the same the armor isn't quite as good of course but all in all the gameplay is going to be very very similar to the gameplay uh, of the VK 3002D and now we come to the real interesting stuff the new German medium tanks tier 8 to tier 9 at tier 8 we've got the Indian Panzer and the Indian Panzer looks a lot like the Löwe. Uh, I don't have a Löwe myself, so I can't say how the gameplay in the Löwe is, but it looks very similar and I think the gameplay is pretty similar as well. It says the top speed is 50 km an hour and the traverse speed 38 degrees per second. That's questionable. The traverse speed is pretty fast. Uh, you have to grant this tank that, but the speed 50 kilometers an hour no way 40 kilometers maybe not 50 this tank plays more like a heavy tank I think it plays like a fast heavy tank but it plays still like a heavy tank like say a bit like a T-125 say or something like that so is this tank good it definitely is I love this tank till now I only had a few games in it but I really like it greatest thing about this tank is the gun depression and the gun elevation. It's so great, you can nearly shoot the ground directly in front of your tank. The gun goes down all the way to here, more or less. This is how far the gun goes down. That's awesome. That's I think this is one of the best gun depressions, if not the best gun depression in the game. And that can be really, really useful. Especially if you look at the turret. The turret is pretty good it's only 90 millimeters thick so that isn't that much but look at the angling and look at the size of the gun mantle this turret is uh, pretty difficult to penetrate from the front for tanks of the same and lower tier and what you can do is you can just let your turret peek over a hill and hide your hull and uh, you'll be the absolute winner in the game. This tank is so great. In my first game in it, I directly had two kills and I dealt out a whole pile of damage. I really love this tank and I'm really looking forward to get it, which I definitely will. Then, if you move on, at tier 9, you've got the Leopard Prototype A. And this tank is a pretty difficult customer to phrase it nicely it's it's very difficult to play because the the speed 56 kilometers per hour is awesome that's a really really good speed but the acceleration isn't all that great the acceleration isn't the acceleration just doesn't match the speed and the traverse speed isn't great either the rate of fire is pretty bad as well five rounds per minute that reload time is really bad and the turret traverse speed isn't all that good either. 36 degrees per second traverse speed for the turret, it's okay, you know, it's actually pretty good. But in comparison with the speed, it isn't so good. So if you say do a carousel maneuver around a tank and this tank, your turret probably won't turn fast enough to keep up with the speed. And now just look at the size of this thing. It's pretty huge and you can't it's pretty difficult to play it because it's that it's that big and you'll be shot uh, from every side because this tank is that easy to penetrate look at the hull armor look at the turret armor that's a joke i can penetrate that with a tier 5 tank i can penetrate that with a tier 4 tank usually you would say that uh this tank has got a very big lower glacius which it obviously has but uh, who cares about the lower glacius because you don't have to aim for the lower glacius you don't have to aim for any weak spots at all you can penetrate this tank in every single place you can penetrate it on the gun mantle you can penetrate it here the only place you can't penetrate this tank is right here because this is auto bounce zone now have a look at the tank from the front how high are the chances of hitting this part of the tank they're minimal so forget it this tanks gonna be penetrated with every shot so 
you have to be protect you have to protect yourself with your speed but then the, the acceleration isn't good enough to keep your speed going all the time so that's pretty difficult let's move on to tier 10 the leopard one I like this tank a lot as I said already the acceleration gets better and you move up to the higher tier the traverse speed gets better the speed stays the same but this tank feels faster than its predecessor the rate of fire gets better yeah so this tank is a lot better than the prototype A and it's an improvement but it's still got the main drawbacks of the Leopard prototype A which is first of all it's abominable armor as I already said this tank can be penetrated from the front by a lucky tier 4 tank if you fire at this tank with AG shells this tank's a goner RT is really dangerous for this tank this tank is fast but when it's tracked or when you stand still to aim at an enemy or something like that and the RT gets a shot at you it will do devastating damage so be really careful concerning RT and another major threat to this tank can be tanks like say the KV-2 the KV-2 has a HE gun that can do up to 900 damage and if the KV-2 is facing this tank it will easily do 900 damage because this tank's made of wet paper so gameplay in this tank according to that is pretty difficult because you have to stay in the move constantly except if there isn't any RT in the game if there isn't any RT in the game uh, that's really good for you because your, the RT is your number one enemy but even so you can still be penetrated by almost any tank in the game so be very careful and now look again at the size of the whole side it's huge you'll be shot so often be penetrated so often oh my god I don't want to think about this but except for that this tank is great there's a few things more I want to tell you about it let's just have a quick look at the gun this gun is one of my favorite guns in the game at the moment the rate of fire is a bit too slow for a medium tank I think but the rate of fire is the only thing on this gun that's kind of a bit bad the rest of it is great the penetration 268 millimeters of penetration that's awesome that's so good 268 millimeters that's great you can penetrate you can nearly penetrate the front of a mouse with that the damage 390 damage on average is nothing special for a medium tank it's kind of it's kind of upper average for the tier 10 medium tanks it's okay but it's not that much for accuracy 0.3 accuracy this is the most accurate tier 10 tank with the E50M the aiming time 1.9 seconds that's kind of there's some tier 1 guns that don't aim as fast that's great 405 millimeter gun 1.9 seconds aiming time that's awesome so all in all this tank is all about the speed and its gun and there's one more thing that this tank is really good at which is the view range 410 meters this is the tank in the game with the second longest view range at all after the M48 pattern. Now the M48 pattern is a bit too slow to be a scout but now look at the speed of this tank 65 kilometers per hour look at the view range 410 meters this not scouting with this tank is a waste of its potential but this tank can not only scout it can do devastating damage as well so except for its bad armor this tank is great there's one more problem or one thing that I was a bit disappointed about Wargaming said that this tank would be extremely accurate while on the move it isn't it just the accuracy is really bad while on the move and I've already got this vertical stabilizer mounted on it but it's still really bad it's you have to stand you have to stop moving really if, except if you're extremely lucky you have to uh, stop moving to shoot 
and when you stop moving, Artie gets you. So that's a real problem. But except for that, this tank is pretty cool. <coughs> and now there are last few tanks that I want to show you in the Russian tech tree. The T60, the T70 and the T80 are tier 2, 3 and 4. Now, I don't really know what Wargaming was thinking of when adding these tanks. Because these tanks are pretty bad. Uh, I haven't played the T60 or the tier seven, uh, T70 yet. Oh, this looks, this tank looks pretty ridiculous. That's a T70. I've played the T80 and I was pretty disappointed because uh, this tank is supposed to be a scout. Look at the speed. 45 kilometers an hour. You can't tell me this is a scout. This isn't a scout. It's it's I don't know what it is. It isn't a scout. It isn't it isn't anything really. I don't this tank isn't good at anything. It's just it's a real mess of a light tank, I think. So um will I get this tank or should you get this tank? No. Should you get any of these tanks? I'm not sure. I haven't played one of these two tanks. I've played this tank. I was really disappointed. So all in all, I think patch 8.5 brings some really good new tanks like say the Leopard 1 or the Indian Panzer. I'm a total fan of the Indian Panzer. The Indian Panzer is my favourite tier 8 tank at the moment. After my first game I loved it and I still love it. It never disappointed me. I hope it won't when I have it in my garage finally on the live server. The Leopard 1. I think you have to be a pretty experienced player to be able to play this tank at its full potential. But if you've kind of mastered it, I bet you it's so much fun. You just have to be careful about being penetrated. You know, you just can't soak up hits or something like that or hope for ricochets because your hit points just aren't good enough. But all in all, I think uh, Patch 8.5 brought uh, some good new variety to the game. This tank will be probably seen a lot in the battles after some people have got it. And uh, I'm looking forward to see it on the live server and I hope you are too. I hope I could give you a first impression of the changes in patch 8.5. And perhaps even today or tomorrow I will be coming up with uh, a review of the Leopard 1 definitely. And might do a review on these two tanks as well but I'm not sure about that. Probably not. I'll definitely still do a review on the Leopard 1. So watch out for that if you're interested. And I've got another news for you. Uh, you may have noticed that the audio quality of my videos isn't all that great. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm recording my videos at the moment with a pretty cheap headset. But uh, today or tomorrow my new microphone will arrive and it's pretty professional. It's the T-Bone SC440. It's uh, pretty professional and look that's going to probably really improve my audio quality so I'm really looking forward to be able to record with that and I hope you're looking forward to the future videos with the better audio quality. Yep, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.